Welcome to Massive Beers. My name is Matt. We do the beer stuff here. Going back in time a little bit. Doing a little bit of Massive Beer Review Classics with a beer I reviewed on the channel before. Eight years ago. Yeah, it was like this 50th or 60th beer I reviewed on my channel. A beer I kind of want to say I haven't had. If, 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 if that was the last time I've had it, I, I, it kind of makes sense. But if I've had it after that, it's probably been... You know, several years in the past. Yeah, we're rolling up a little Smith. I call it Smith J. I don't even know. It's it's it, you know, it's M S. Actually, it's a T or a, a what's that? Um, God, words are hard. Uh, it's a comma T space S M I S J E. So I think that's Smith Smithye Smithya Smithya. Uh, brewery. Um, it is imported by B United. This is their Belgian countryside um, winter ale. Ale brewed with spice. Cursed. Smith J. Cursed. Smith J. Cursed. Um, they come from. Are they. Is it Belgian or Netherlands they come from? Let me see if I can find it. Bread in Connecticut is. Uh, okay, Belgium. Um, Mater, Belgium. And like I said, I have not reviewed or haven't had this, I don't think, since those eight years since I originally reviewed it. This says a lot B7. I don't know what that means as far as date. I can tell you right now for an absolute fact, this is old. We'll give you the old Merc ring proof. You can see that little thing that has been sitting on a shelf for so long. And where this came from, I'm telling you. I know it's mighty old. So we're doing a little bit of vintage beer. We're doing a little bit of Vassar Beer Review Classic. I remember enjoying this beer, but did I enjoy it that much that I haven't had it since? But then again, I don't really see this beer anywhere, so it's not like I can pick it up all the time. Anyway. Oh, boy. I like that hiss on there. That makes me kind of very, 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 very happy. Look at that carbonation. I'm telling you, I'm guessing. I'll have to look up a lot number. Maybe I'll do it live on the air. On the air. Like, this is whatever. Um, I'm guessing this is... It might be as old as the last time I reviewed it. It might be eight years old, let's put it that way. Um, it comes in 11% alcohol by volume. Let's see if I can find any kind of date anywhere else. It's just that lot number on there. <laughs> it's actually curiously labeled for sale in the United States, which I find quite unique. Well, actually, it might be relabeled by B United. They, they've been known to do such things quite a bit. So, anyway, label wise, I love it. It's classic, old school, like just, you know, ghetto ass Belgian. Uh, beer labeling so I can get down with it and honestly I'm not gonna lie to you I'm super excited for this because it has one that carbonation too you can see I mean it, it might have la lost a little bit of luster over the years but to get that hiss to get that head on there super excited it's a Belgian strong dark it's classification with spice it's a winter warmerish kind of Belgian dark Belgian quadish beer and it looks the part of that it has this nice rich brown core to it um, nice big frothy for its age frothy head that comes right back on a twirl kind of like a malt ball color maybe a bit close to the khaki on that let's get a nose past its prime but i think we're in for a fun trip here because there is a nice richness to it um you know a lot of times when i talk about uh, these beers um uh, aging belgian darks belgian quasi very much all about the sugar daddy toffee candied portion of the show raisin nettiness is really where we want to go it's a little bit different for me you can smell that it has this richness to it that is probably brought on by age but it comes off as a little bit more creme brulee like for me but with that added spice there's almost like a little bit i don't want to say like ultra winter spice like a clove or or something like that it's a bit more peppery for me like a pe pe pink peppercorn kind of pepperiness to me with a little bit maybe of an herbal spiciness but it really is that rich sweetness that that uh, almost a la belgian candied sugar on not sure if they use it in this they probably had but it's kind of morphed itself into something a bit richer a bit more decadent that's where that creme brulee portion of the show so I mean, think about an under sweetened creme brulee something along those lines with a bit of kind of classic kind of beer winter spice thrown on top of it that's been tempered a little bit by time um but it smells really really fun let's put it that way let's dive in cheers y'all that's fun it's really fun. It's not like 
gonna change the world kind of fun for me. But there's just something very, very cool about the experience, especially since the carbonation has stayed so nice in this beer, because that's what I think really keeps this beer propped up into something that's quite tasty. It's definitely undersweetened from what you get on the nose, because it doesn't get anywhere near a dessert kind of sweetness for me. There's a sweetness to it, almost like a classic Belgian double level sweetness to it, with a little zing of aged richness on top of it. It has that little roasted caramel, toasted creme brulee kind of um, uh, uh, browned caramel kind of thing going on, which is the zing of it um, towards the end of like the experience. That spiciness that was here, um, I could I could see it being much more pronounced in a fresher beer. Kind of makes sense, you know, the spices can fall off quite quick, but it has this almost muddled, and I'm not saying that in a negative sense, although I, I think the fresh portion of the show would probably be better. It's like a lot of the spices that be in here, those classic winter spices that you get in a lot of Belgian beers, it have a kind of morphed and amalgamized into just one singular favor, which is generic tempered spiciness. Leading its way is more almost like a spicy pepperiness. It kind of got that in the nose, and it kind of shows through in the taste. A very adulty beer. A very, I almost want to say like contemplative beer. You want to sip on this almost like a like a cognac or something as opposed to drinking it like a beer. Even though it has that carbonation to it, it doesn't come off still like just the way the beer kind of works. I'm drinking a skosh warm. I'm saying this is probably closer to mid to high 50s as opposed to low 50s. And I think that's actually exactly where this beer should be drank. I think it's quite fun. I think it's quite fun. I'm really curious to go back and watch my review. I haven't watched it. I wanted to go into this fresh and see what my past self thought about this beer. But I think it's quite fun. It's not otherworldly. It's not going to change my thoughts about, you know, Belgian darks and Belgian style spiced winter beers or anything like that. But as someone who covets, someone who really, really enjoys and really thinks that aged beer is a, is a kind of a unique and separate journey onto beer itself, and that y if you appreciate what beer age can do to a beer, both in a positive, neutral, and negative sense, I think it's a very, very cool trip. And honestly, you know, I paid $6 American for this single bottle of a several-year-old aged beer. Let me see if I can find an actual date on this. I highly doubt that's going to be something I'm going to be able to track down, but we'll see what's what. I'm, I'm guessing this might be, like like I said, eight years old. It might be as old as... Actually, you know what? Where I got this, it could have been... I could have bought this bottle from the place, the same place eight years ago. I'm not lying to you about that, to be perfectly honest. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, uh, let's see. Not that this makes great for videos. Uh, I don't know. Come on. Smith. B7. B7. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not going to get anything. I don't believe. Yeah. I'm, I'm curious to see if anybody else out there um, knows anything about the date on here. Um, like some professional beer person. Uh, let's see. Let me do B7. I know this is absolutely entertaining. Um, yeah. Nah, if I do that, nothing happens. Anyway, we're going to give up. I wouldn't be surprised if that beer I reviewed... Actually, no. You know what? I'm pretty sure because I, I double-checked to make sure I reviewed it, and I'm pretty sure that came in a little stubby bottle. Could be wrong. Regardless. I, I If this doesn't have more than five years on it, I'd be very, very shocked. But in the grand scheme of things, as, as far as this beer goes, it's a very fun experience. You know, just getting this kind of age that has aged quite well. I don't think it's a world-class beer. Probably fresh. It just aids in something a bit different and a bit fun. Gives you a little bit of winter spiciness. Hides alcohol really well, especially, you know, age is going to help that. But it's it, at this point, it's just, like, ultra drinkable. And just has this kind of, like, 
we're dipping into fall or getting close to the season kind of vibe to it. Listen, we're almost halfway through uh, September. You know, we're getting cooler nights. You know, days are getting whatever. So this is kind of something that was like right perfect timing for me. And I think it ended up being a really fun experience. That's all I got for you. Uh, Taste-wise, we should go over that maybe instead of me just talking about whether I like the beer or not. Um, like I said, mouth feels quite nice because that carbonation has stayed. It is, I already talked about it, what am I saying, but tannic, a lot of tannic, a lot of tea, uh, a burnt, charred, um, flambéed kind of caramel, but an undersweetened version of that, a bit of muddled winter spice, leaning a little bit pepper for me, done and done. It's one of the better Belgian darts that I've had as of late. It, it's, it's, we'll put it in the conversation from its uniqueness. It's not towards the top, but it's very fun and I dig it. Valued availability on this. Six bucks, this this experience, well worth that um, price point off the shelf and leave you with, if you like what we like this. If you like aged beer. I mean, it, it, you like Belgian beers, you like aged beer. This is kind of wheelhouse stuff. Uh, it's not, who knows, the next bottle I, I could pull off that shelf because they had several at this location. Next one could be a total dud or it could be even better. Who knows? So your experience is going to vary, but if this is the bottle that you got... Uh, and then you're an age beer. I think you enjoy it quite a bit. Yeah. Smith's Day. Smith's Day. Smith's Day. Um, have you, uh, yeah. Have you had this beer? Have you been to the brewery? Have you had this particular batch, this Lot 7, Lot B7? If you know the dating codes, please let me know. Any of that fun stuff. If you like aged old beer, let's talk about it down there. How about that? So... There you go. Review in the books. Hopefully you enjoyed the review. Hopefully you're enjoying a little bit of age beer right now. Hopefully see you next time. Cheers, y'all.